celebrate the views that inspired her is Yorkshire lass and international opera singer Leslie Garrett. The Yorkshire Dales covers 700 square miles of the north of England, straddling the central Pennines. It's a living landscape full of history, tradition and amazing geological features. I was born in South Yorkshire, but I've loved the Yorkshire Dales all my life. I've spent many a happy hour here exploring its timeless beauty. But this is a landscape with a story to tell. It's a story of a relationship between man and nature over thousands of years. And I believe that here in the Yorkshire Dales, there's a special place that truly deserves to be Britain's favorite view. This is limestone country, and the geology gives rise to towering cliffs, magnificent waterfalls, and limestone pavements like these at Malham Cove and Gordale Scar in the Southern Dales. But the drama doesn't stop at the surface. Nature has hidden some of the best views deep underground. Here we go. OK. Follow us, put on. Right, Leslie, you've seen the beauty of the Yorkshire Dales above ground, now you're ah. going to see the beauty of it below ground, yes? <laughs> This is the most popular cave in the world. This is called the Long Church. A hidden world of potholes and caves lies beneath the surface, all carved by water. Down in the cave is a very important factor is the water, because this is an active cave, and in a sense, this cave is still growing. You just keep to that side there, there's little yeah. more of your wellies, lad. <laughs> a bit of a hole there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Look at that formation there, the rock. What does it remind you of? It's like a, a rock monster, if you like. You can see the eye and the mouth. Make sure it is rock. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, Dave, how important is the action of water on this limestone environment? How does it form what we see today here? Well, it's, it's shaped the, the Yorkshire Dales, hasn't it? You've seen it for yourself with the, yeah. with the valleys and the, the limestone pavements, and especially the caves. Don't forget, there's over a thousand caves in this area alone. Yeah. Uh, one of them is over 76 kilometres in length. Wow. And so that's that's some cave system. Yeah, yeah. And don't forget, there's still caves waiting to be found. It's a really strange feeling. It's a bit like being inside somebody's body. You know, they call it the backbone, <laughs> and it does look like bone. It's a similar colour, and you sort of feel you you're trespassing in a way in something very private. Well, this has to be a first, an operatic aria sung live in a Yorkshire Dales bottle. <laughs> Nature carved a magnificent landscape in the Dales, but the first farmers also made their mark clearing the valley floors of rock and building the dry stone walls that have become such a feature of the Yorkshire Dales. Farming wasn't the only impact on this landscape because these hills held a precious mineral. Barely visible from the lush valley floors are the scars of an ancient lead mining industry. To find my favourite view, I have come to a remote northern dale called Swaledale. I am treading a lead miner's path through an ancient industrial wasteland. Lead mining in this area has been going on for at least 2,000 years. 2,000 years? Uh, Seriously? Probably before the Romans. Wow. And the Romans certainly were here quite active. See, the resourceful Yorkshire people. Absolutely. Absolutely. They were Italian, the Romans. <laughs> <laughs> lead has been mined in Swaledale for millennia, but the real boom was in the 19th century. We're going to set back in time 200 years. Ooh. There's hundreds of miles of passages like this all throughout the swell down. Underground, like this? All dug with picks, shovels and a bit of blasting powder. Oh. And are they all lined out with this beautiful stone? Because this is like this is like an underground stone walling isn't system, it? isn't it? There's it's nothing holding yeah. these together Ooh. except little wedges of rock. Really? Yeah. How important was lead mining to what was basically a rural community? Well, it was a rural community, but once the lead mining really took off, 
in the 18th, 19th century, it was probably more of an industrial community than a rural community, and the farming was peripheral, really. Mm. So for a long, long time, lead mining was the Dale. The impact on Swaledale's landscape was huge. Hundreds of years of spoil heaps still scar the landscape today. High on the valley sides, many of the former homes of mining families can still be seen. This is where one of the last mining families used to live, the Guy family, lived here. Guy family? Oh, yes. Nine of them. <gasps> oh, my goodness me! <laughs> and the people that lived here, they were miners, but they were farmers too, I think, weren't they? They were, whether they were mining farmers or farming miners. And what happened when the mines closed to all these communities? Well, at least 50% of the population moved away. That was amazing. Hundreds of mining families left, but some stayed and, like Catherine Calvert's family, became full-time farmers. In spite of the harsh conditions, farming has continued as an important part of Swaledale's economy. They even have their own special breed of sheep. So what's special about a Swaledale sheep? What's unusual about it? Well, it's really hardy. They can survive upon the fells. Uh, in cold, snowy conditions. It does get very bleak, doesn't it? it yeah, it does. Yeah. If you're wearing a Swaledale sweater, you will certainly never be chilly. No. You might be a bit scratchy, <laughs> <laughs> a bit itchy, but um, you'll, you'll, you'll never be cold. With their thick, woolly coats, these Swaledale sheep live on high moorland pastures. They only come down to the valley for lambing in the spring. There's a lot of sheep here. How do you count them all? With the Swaledale old way of counting them is Yan, Tan, Tether, Mether, Hip, Hip. And then you put a thumb in your waistcoat and start again. But you have to have a lot of balls in your waistcoat. <laughs> For that many sheep, you would. For that many you? sheep, yeah. <laughs> but what's so special about this particular dale for you, Swaledale? Well, the thing is, I think we're, we get spoilt because we wake up to it every morning. Mm. So there's no place like home. You go elsewhere, but it just takes a bit of beating. Generations of family farms in Swaledale's narrow valley have created this wonderful higgledy-piggledy maze of tiny fields. Oh, <laughs> don't you just love these? Now, this is what the Dales are all about. These are your quintessential, fabulous, dry stone walls. And these walls enclose a unique landscape of field barns and wildflower meadows. Shall we see if I like butter? Is it yellow? What do you think? <laughs> the flowers are just beautiful here. And originally, this land would have supported um, a family. Um, and it's good soil and makes wonderful hay. So they'd have taken hay as well and kept it in that barn there for the winter time. Now, these barns are extraordinary. There are more barns per square mile in the Dales than anywhere else in Britain, and there are more barns in Swaledale than anywhere else in the Dales, so your concentration of amazing barns is hottest here. The barns might stand empty, but in the villagers, local spirit is alive and well. What makes this community so special is the people who live here and who put something back into the community every day. This is no better illustrated than by the Muka Silver Band. The band was formed 110 years ago, and it truly represents the life and vitality of this Swaledale Valley. Hey, that was fantastic. Thank you. That was lovely. Anyone can join the band, but here there is one family name that really stands out. Maurice Guy. Peter Guy. Dorothy Guy. Dennis Guy. Susan Calvert Knee Guy. Kirsty Guy. Alan Guy. Jasmine Guy. Norman Guy. Ron Guy. Jack Middleton. In that beautiful dale, home of the swales, how well Half the band are Guys, one of the oldest families in the valley. They love Swaledale so much they even sing about it. Home of the swales, beautiful, beautiful dale. Dale. 
band was first formed in 1897 for Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. So it spans three so, centuries, actually, doesn't it? Just, yeah, 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 which yeah. is amazing. And yes. grandfather was actually one of the committee. Really? See, I think that's what's so special about this place, mm, the way yeah. things are handed on. Well, it's con continuity, isn't it? Continuity, yeah. that's what Dales are and about. And hopefully really. my grandchildren will keep that continuity going for quite a lot of years. Hundreds of years of lead miners and farmers have made the Swaledale Valley what it is today, a special place with a unique view. I stand here and I think of the generations of people who have welded themselves to this remarkable landscape, who have adapted themselves to make the most of this environment. There are many places to enjoy the glorious sweep of Swaledale, but by far my favourite is this view, looking west from Gunnerside into the sunset. It's a place of remarkable beauty, and it should be enjoyed and cherished by all of us. For that reason, Swaledale deserves to be Britain's favourite view. Vote for the Yorkshire Dales to be in the final when the